Hey, 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 it's Rebecca, and you are listening to Resilient by Design. Today's episode, I'm recording to my phone because I am not at my podcasting gear because it's the holidays and I am getting ready for 2023. And so I wanted to record this episode as a first episode of the 2023 season, which, believe it or not, is going to be season four. Like, what? And all I have to say is that look at me now. And I don't mean, hey, hey, look at me. I mean, shit. If I could start a podcast and have it run for four years, well, it's really like three and a half, you can do anything. Like, it only has to start. And you know how passionate I feel about this, but truly... It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to start. I started this podcast from our little spare bedroom during COVID and recorded some episodes, did not have fancy podcast equipment. Like half the time the sound was good, half the time it wasn't. I didn't have fancy guests. It was just like me asking some friends and reaching out to influencers on Instagram who more often than not said no. Um, But I just kept going. And so if you're going to kickstart your year with any message, And I'm going to give you lots of messages and lots of inspo, I hope, in this episode. But I hope that if you don't get any message, you do start your year with this. It doesn't have to be perfect. It really doesn't. It just has to start. As creatives, we hold ourselves back because we want it to be beautiful. We want the website to be, have the perfect wording. We want the right color scheme. It's the message that's going to matter. You are going to learn as you do things. So whatever goal you have set, and if you haven't set goals yet, you got lots of time. But whatever goal you plan to set or you decide you want for this year, just remember, you're not going to get there if you don't start. So you better freaking start because otherwise Q1 will be over. And by Q1, for those who don't know, I mean January, February, March, you'll roll into March, into the spring and think, huh, wow, I really haven't made any progress. It's because you didn't start. And sometimes starting just means baby bite-sized pieces. And sometimes it also means kicking your butt in gear to do the thing during the week that you don't feel like doing. Maybe you said, oh, all I need to do is email, I don't know, a new real estate agent every week to get in front of them. And then you do it for a couple of weeks and then you kind of fall off because you're like, I don't really feel like it. I've got enough work right now. I'm not... Keep doing the thing that you know is going to move the needle. Woo! Okay, that was a preachy intro. Uh, Here we go. I'm going to share with you my hopes and dreams for 2023 and how I can hopefully inspire you to really step up and play a bigger game. Enjoy this episode. All right. (laughs) I'm Rebecca Hay, and I've built a successful interior design business by trial and error, podcasts, online courses, and so many freaking books. Over the last decade, I've grown from an insecure student to having false starts to careers, and now I'm finally in the place where I want to be. Throughout my journey, it's been pretty obvious that I'm passionate about business and helping other entrepreneurs do the same. Each week, I'll share tangible takeaways from my own experience and the experiences of other badass women to help you build your confidence and change your business. Okay, let's dive in, shall we? Hopefully by now, you've enjoyed your holidays, you've perhaps been uh, overindulgent in the food and the wine and the friends and the socializing, and maybe you're just kind of starting to sober up and get ready for what's ahead. I've never really been a New Year's resolution type of person because, let's face it, whenever I set a New Year's resolution, I don't really do anything to make it happen, but I've always been very goals-oriented. I, too, like many of you, will set goals, and as the year goes on, they'll shift or I'll maybe not achieve them because all of a sudden I realize I don't really want that thing anymore. That's okay. But my real, my real plan for 2023 is to be much more intentional and to simplify in order to amplify. And I want to talk a little bit about what that means, and then I'm going to share a little bit later just a few of the goals and dreams that I have for the year ahead. Um, 
These are by no means all of the things that I've kind of written down in my goal setting session, but if you, if, if you don't take anything else away from this episode, other than the nugget I, I gave you in the intro, uh, I would say, you know, start reviewing your year. Start doing some goal setting if you haven't. You know, the first few years of my business, I never did this. It was something that I stumbled across an influencer who was happened to talk about, you know, what do you do at the end of the year and how do you prep for the year ahead? And I was loving this idea. I latched right onto it and I started to implement. And I worked for the first few years of my design firm, following the book Traction. So if you haven't heard it and you are building your, oh no, now I have a visitor at my house. This is so awkward. This is why one of my goals for 2023 is to have a place that I can go and record this podcast where I'm 100% uninterrupted. Hold that thought. One second, I'm going to pause and be right back. Okay, so that was just my mom checking to see where the kids are. Um, I can tell you that one of the things that's been a biggest frustration for me in the last little while is just my house feeling like it's not big enough and not having a space to just go close the door and work from home and do things that involve recording and videos uninterrupted. I've always been someone to say that I actually hate working from home. I really despise it because I don't feel like I can compartmentalize at, at, at home and I really... I like to be present where my feet are and I don't like sitting in my home that's meant for relaxing and enjoying and also working. And so I've had, yes, I do have my office, um, but there's people in my office and so I can't do recordings there very effectively. Anyways, let let me get back on track and try not to let that super irritate me. (laughs) So Anyhow, so all that to say that um, if you're someone who's intrigued by this idea of a year-end review or, you know, just sort of setting some goals for the year ahead, then I recommend you can go back and listen to some of the episodes that I've recorded over the years. And there's even a a downloadable freebie in one of the episodes that will help you kind of sit down and reflect. But now I find it's more than just a day. I used to think, oh, I'm going to sit down for one day and I'm going to plan out the year. Well, it's not enough time. And so it takes a couple of weeks till I sort of sit down. I, I always use, this is how I do it. I use, uh, without going into too much detail, because I've done that before on the podcast, but I use Evernote. It's an app on my iPad. I just, I don't know why, that's just where I started doing it. And that's where I do it every year. And I have a folder or whatever it's called for each year review. And I kind of do the same thing, but that's where I take all my notes. And so I'll start, I'll come back to it. I'll do a team review to kind of deep a deeper understanding of the financials. Then I'll come back to it because as much as I want to to do these reviews with my team, it's still my name on the door and it's still my business and it's my future. And I need to understand where do I want to go before I bring that to the team and brainstorm ideas of, hey, I, let's go after builders. I want to do more model homes, let's say, or how do we grow the podcast? Or, you know, I really want to do more coaching or, or more, more, more courses. I want to meet people where they're at. So spending some time doing a little deep dive, I like to do a brainstorm, just plop everything on a piece of paper, all my ideas, like a big, um, I don't know what they're called, where you do a circle in the middle and it's like 2023 goals. And I got little offshoot lines from there and I just put everything down personal and professional. And then I start to highlight things that fall under different categories, right? So like one category might be business, one might be health and wellness. Um, one could be family, whatever it is. And so anyways, it takes me a, usually a couple of weeks. Like I like to start this early in December, but then I'm, as I'm doing that, I tend to get pulled in different directions. I'd love to say that I take a few days off and I go to a hotel in the middle of nowhere, just me, my pen and my iPad, but I haven't achieved that level of um, dedication. Maybe one day I will. One of my goals for 2023 is to spend more time alone because I'm always with people and I love people. You know me, like community is everything to me. I'm all about connecting others um, and helping people, but it definitely requires me to be alone to kind of recharge my batteries and just let my brain clean itself, like let my brain process really think about my next steps. Is this what I really want to be doing? Let's reflect on what's happening. So that is one of my intentions for this year is to have ideally a day and a night um, where I'm alone to maybe just veg out and watch TV, or maybe it's to sit down and review my goals, whatever it might be. So 2023, my intention here on the podcast is to provide as much value 
as I possibly can. So the more that you guys tell me what you like, the better I can help you. But I can tell you I've also done a lot of soul searching. And I've learned that there are a few things now in my life that I really love to do. And there's other things that I'm just not enjoying. And I would encourage you to do this exercise if you haven't done this. And one of the things I always do as part of my year in review is I look at, you know, what did I do in 2022 that I, A, want to repeat, B, never want to repeat, and C, want to experience more of. So that's just part of my end of year planning. But then once you get that all on paper, you start to think like, okay, what do I really love? Like what really lights me up? What are the activities that light me up? One of the things is this podcast, interviewing incredible people. I absolutely freaking love it. But it's, you know, I've really started to realize how much this podcast is costing us. And I I think we tallied it's just shy of $40,000 a year by the time we pay for the editing. Of course, I'm like sharing all this here. By the time, I mean, I could do a GoFundMe, but that's not the plan. I want to bring on some partners or some sponsors because I know that this podcast is valuable. And I know that the people listening to this podcast um, really are, you guys are such loyal listeners. And I think if I can bring on the right brands who I already love and know, and I can share the love with them, and if they can help contribute to the cost of running this podcast, that would be amazing. Um, So that is one area that I really, really love. And the one other thing that I've really come to realize is that I'm loving coaching so much more than doing interior design. And that's something that's not new. It's been in the back of my mind for a really long time. Well, not a really long time. That's not true. Since the pandemic hit and I started the podcast. Basically, once I started the podcast, that was the beginning of me saying, huh, I don't know, like design's just not filling me up the same way because I love helping all these people, especially these women. Um... I'm being like super honest here, guys. I don't necessarily have the answer for you because I don't want to stop doing interior design, but it's become more and more challenging to service the beautiful clients that we do have, the high-end clients that require a lot of attention. They require a senior designer. They require project management. They require um, administration. And then I'm required to manage all those people in addition to trying to grow the online courses. And I have so many exciting ideas of things that I want to do. And I've had so many members of this community say, hey, can you do this? Can you do that? And I'm like, ah, I really want to, but I don't have the time because I'm managing two businesses. I'm like CEO times two. And it's just become very um, stressful isn't really the word. I don't feel stressed. Like everything's set up pretty well. Like I'm pretty hands off, but mentally it's... I feel pulled in two different directions. So I'm, I'm thinking of doing a few things and just taking on a certain number of projects per year that is far less than any pro- design projects that I've ever taken on before. And I'm trying to figure out the math on that. And I do have some projects that started in 2022, so they would be a part of that. And they're, they're great projects and we'll continue to do those. But I'm really more interested now in growing the online courses, in growing this community and seeing how much more we can help you, how many more designers we can bring in and shine a light on them and help them grow their business. Because it turns out for me, my passion really is teaching. My passion really is helping other people make change in their lives. And it lights me up beyond anything I ever experienced when I was doing design. So... With all that said, oh, see, now I have another interruption. How annoying is this? Hold on. Oh, my goodness. Okay, my husband just came upstairs. This is what I'm talking about. Oh, my God. It drives me crazy. (sighs) Okay. So, all that to say, my intention for 2023 is to get really crystal clear on where I bring value in all the things I do and to focus my time on that. So if it means doing fewer design projects and just saying no to projects that are under a certain budget, which sounds scary, then that's what I'm going to do because it will free up my time to record more podcasts, spend time getting even better interviews. We are really hoping 
We're definitely launching Power of Process again this spring, so that is coming back, so stay tuned for that. We're looking at setting it up, and maybe by the time you've listened to this, it's up and running, but setting up um, a wait list because we're going to cap, because we've had so much interest, uh, we are going to cap the number of people that we're going to bring in because we do it multiple times a year. And so we were going to set it up so people could put a deposit just to secure their spot. So hopefully that's going to be up and running in January. And then also, um, I want to do momentum again. I want to do short courses. I have a pricing course that I want to get out into the world. And so we're really looking at, do we launch like a campus? Is it something where it's an online shop and then you guys can do, take whatever course suits you at the time? Bring in guests that can do that, can, that can do courses. That can, I mean, there's so many ideas and so much opportunity, but if I don't free up my time to focus in on that, then it's never going to happen. And, you know, if you're not paying attention, a year will fly by. Uh, what else? I'm trying to think what else do I want to share with you guys. Um, <laughs> one other thing that I'm hoping to do this year, and I haven't fully planned it out as of this recording, so you guys can hold me accountable to it, is I want to take a sabbatical. Like, I want to take, in the summer, I, I mean, ideally four weeks, maybe just two, but then is that a sabbatical? That's just a vacation. I've just never taken a two-week vacation since I've been running my business, which is crazy. I take several weeks throughout the year, but two weeks at a time? So I'm hoping July or August to take a chunk of time as like a sabbatical and get things set up so that the team can roll, but it would be a quiet time for me to just focus on family and anything else that I like to do. So that's one of the things that I'm looking to do um, this year. And truly, I think there's lots of other little things that I'm really looking forward to. And I have other personal goals set that I'm, I'm not going to share. I do share a lot, but I'm not going to share some of those here. Um, but that's my intention. Those are some of my intentions for 2023. And I've got it on paper and I'm going to print it out. And then I'm going to look and map it out by quarter. Okay, what needs to happen? I'm going to use that full focus planner. I started using that in the last quarter of 2022. I really liked it. I found it hard to stay. I'm going to be honest. I found it hard to stay on top with like the daily. And I think as a designer, you probably can relate. Like I'm not always sitting at a desk. So it's, it's, it's hard to have like the same like startup ritual every day and the same shutdown ritual. Like I might be shutting down leaving a supplier. I might be shutting down recording podcasts. Like it's not something that's as easy for me, but I've been trying to follow that format where you, you set the goals, you break them down into what are the steps that I need to achieve them. And you just focus on one quarter at a time. So you don't get overwhelmed. Um, I'd love to know what you guys are doing to sort of set yourselves up for success this year. All of that was just a little taste of what's going on behind the scenes with Rebecca Hay. And uh, let me know what you think. And I just want to let you know we got some really exciting content coming at you in 2023. There's a couple of interviews that we uh, recorded back in September, or not September, Pfft. whoa, where am I? In December that are coming out uh, in January with some really inspirational guests, lots of great solo content, lots of students that are in our community that are making incredible strides in their business in the last year. So get ready for some serious inspiration. I want to talk about marketing. I think there's gonna be a lot of content about process and marketing because marketing is what we are all looking to improve on when an economy tends to slow down. So there you have it. Just a little snippet of what's to come in 2023. Let me know. Join our designer meetup Facebook group. Let me know in there what goals you've set, what are your intentions for the year ahead. And as always, please don't forget to review this podcast and, um, you know, I'll see you on the gram. All right. That's it. Happy New Year. See you soon.